In this demo, we're going to show a UI application standalone. It's not hooked into the database, into the server, or anything. Uh, this is all generated by OA Builder, and part of what it will do is it will generate a main within the class, each one of the JFC class that it generates, so it can be ran standalone and you know uh, test it from there. Uh, all this code is generated under the HiFi project, under source, under the project itself. In this case, it's the TMGSC HiFi uh, package under view. And then each one of the components in the model <coughs> then is under OA, which is a consistent way of how it's generating objects or uh, under the OA uh, package name. And then each one of the objects in a model has its own JFC. So if we look at uh, for employee, there's one called employee JFC. So that's a code I have here. This code is see down here on the bottom is 3348 lines long so it's a lot of code but this is a really busy UI for this component a couple things about it real quick before we run it is it has access it does the model view control so all of the model components and stuff are already set up here uh, and then the view components are all built into this and then they're all there's binding that's done so uh, Java comes with a suite of uh, uh, component set called um, Swing or JFC, Java Foundation Classes. And what we've done with OA is we've taken those classes and then we've uh, uh, subclassed them out so that they will automatically work with our model, with our objects, so we can bind to them and stuff like that. So if you, if you went through this, um, great went through this class to see how that's working how it sets them up here's an example on the UI we're going to have a text field so that so that the last name can be displayed or edited and here's the code that actually creates that bindable component so OA text field it's given the the collection class that it that it wants to be uh, able to edit and then the name of the property and then a parameter in this case it just tells it what the width is going to be uh, since this is a collection and this is uh, a text field, a text field needs to know which one of the objects in the collection it's working with. So one of the things about a hub uh, collection class is it has a method called getActiveObject or getAO for short. And the getActiveObject, what that will do is the hub collection can have the concept of a current active object. So whatever that's set to, and there's a method also to set what the active object is, or set it by pause, or set it by the actual object itself. And whenever that changes, this text field will automatically display that employee object's last name. If there's none selected, if the active object e equals null, then it will uh, basically disable the component and be grayed out. So that's an example of that. The employee object, well, this go, go ahead and run the the UI. Uh, to, to run this basically just from Java say run um, pick uh, pick this one to run if it gives you a choice because the other ones are inner classes. So I'm going to run this it's going to run in my other window so I'll bring it over here and for this since it's self-contained within this class it doesn't connect to the database or anything. It just it brings up the UI. It's all bind uh, everything's bound to the employee collection this tree is showing the employee collection it's empty it's not connected again not connected to the database or anything like that uh, but we can see the different components that are available or built into for the employee and really we're only seeing a portion of them so if I create a new employee here employee one two three We can see here that we have our tree. We have a table uh, that lets us edit, go all the way across. Uh, another thing to note is OA Builder generates all this. So all that code gets generated. And it's all built on how we define it in the model. So, so we can decide how we want our uh, editable grid to look. Um, and there's also, here's the search. So within the employee, we had all the different search criteria and stuff like that. So this is all built. 
So if we go in here and add some search criteria, uh, it's not hooked to a database. It doesn't care. It's not going to say you're not hooked to a database because it's data source independent. So it doesn't depend on that. But um, so it gives us that. It has a reset. Um, and all these ranges and different options for the different queries. And again, this is all based on the criteria that when we were modeling out, we said we wanted to have. Um, the results would show here. Um, this tree here is uh, interesting because whenever we have an object in our model, we can pick anything that it's nav has a navigational path from. So in our system, we might go ahead and select all the companies and if we have that list of companies, then we can drill into the companies to get to the employees, and this would give us like a, a tree structure to find it, find it that way. And uh, obviously, uh, we have the data, database uh, queries that could be built to give us a list here for searching. So that's one thing. Um, so here, if we, d uh, it also generates autocomplete. And something happened there. Um, but it autocomplete controls and it will go off of, I think, first name, last name, or whatever's defined in the model. So I'll define it, put another one in here. So now when I clicked on one here, now what we were showing is actual listing here. If I click on one of them, it's showing me all the information about the employee. And what it will what it will basically do is lay out all the single pieces of information here. And then all the mini pieces of information, it will be across uh, basically a tab. So all this, again, is generate from OA Builder, and it basically just has a pattern that it follows. So if you have there's many addresses, is it will set it up to do this. Uh, there's other employees. If we look at many addresses, there's a new button. Within our model, it shows that uh, employees has addresses and that it's owned by the employee. Uh, there's no, uh, it was set up so you don't add it from someplace else. If we look at employees, an employee can manage other employees, so that's what this is. We could either create a new employee here, but we can also add an employee that's already in the system to be an employee that's being managed. When that's set up, you notice that then we can actually see, so if I create a new employee here, we can see that employee here. So, so we're, we're on the manager here. That, that manager manages this employee. And then it's it's kind of recursive. Uh, that will automatically uh, here's this uh, listing a, a, a table that's listing out the list of employees uh, that's under this uh, manager. And then as we click on one, we can see their information. So that's a consistent way of how it kind of shows the hierarchy and how it all works through. The other thing that we have here, that's uh, with the toolbar and the different options and stuff like that. Let's see what that one is. So, um, is a go to. So what we have here is we're drilling down into the, uh, to this employee. Uh, and as we go into here, we could also, this employee could have employees. So if we set that up, we can see here that the employee that we're on, the, uh, 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 the first employee of this manager, is now going to show in this tree. So we have this tree structure that lets us go through it. But as, as we keep getting deeper, deeper, so to speak, uh, into drilling down into the UI stuff, a, a lot of times um, we need something to be able to kind of expand our workspace. So that's what the go to button to do. So as we click on something in the tree, the, um, to select one of the objects, we can hit the go to, and that will automatically bring up the UI for whatever we're looking at. So that, again, just gives us some fresh real estate here. You just hit escape to get rid of that. Uh, and I believe that's it for this. And the find would automatically, again, be set up to allow us to have an autocomplete. Um, and it's a reusable component. The other thing that's interesting about these objects is an employee is used in other places, like a program has employees, a warder has a, a ward order has an employee. Everything that's attached to it, again, that's based on how we modeled this out. The UI for those components will automatically then create a employee JFC 
to actually allow those to be viewable within it. So, so this employee JSP is kind of the pieces parts for all of the UI related to an employee that's used to display an employee, but also used uh, for other components that have a reference to employee, so we can basically uh, get the UI components for it. The main method here that gets generated basically just creates a sample application that we looked at, and it's, it's basically just setting up kind of the frame to put it in, and displays that, makes it visible, and that's it. 